A Quan Meister production presents the Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen with special guest Johnny McDopey Pants. Hello, Johnny. Do you know about the Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen? You don't? Well, would you like to know? You do? Well, that's great. Let us begin. It all started with the downfall of the Age of Absolution in 1789, when members of France's Third Estate were becoming dissatisfied with the distribution of power in French society, particularly towards the monarchy, King Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette. With the people's hunger for change, a revolution began, fueled by the voices of Maximilien de Robespierre and Jean-Paul Marat, among others, with uproars of violence Radical changes and reforms were made to France's government structure. The nobles of the second estate were no longer exempt from taxes, and all men were now permitted to take government and church positions of power, independent of what estate they came from. But one of the most important changes that was made was on August 26, 1789, when the National Assembly passed the Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen. Still don't know what the Declaration is all about, Johnny? Ha ha ha, that's okay. Well, let me explain. The Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen was a document that tore down the feudal rights that were ingrained in the tradition of France's monarchy. With the revolution heavily influenced by the Enlightenment, many of the ideas of the Declaration reflected on the beliefs and the values of people of the time. Statements such as Men are born and remain free and equal in rights. Liberty consists in being able to do anything that does not harm others. And free communication of ideas and of opinions is one of the most precious rights of man, were included in the document, which strongly contrasted the values of the French monarchy, which once ruled the country with impunity. Now, Johnny, you're probably thinking, what else influenced the Declaration? Isn't that right, Johnny? During the creation of the Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen, many aspects were influenced from other similar texts from other nations. The Declaration statements bore resemblance to those in the English Bill of Rights and the American Declaration of Independence, as well as from John Locke's Second Treatise of Government. Such statements included the subjects of universal and inalienable human rights unaffected by wealth, power in government, or profession. Ideas of freedom of thought and speech allowing for ideas to be discussed and criticized, and rights to personal property. As a whole, the Declaration was to acknowledge the people's rights to liberty, property, security, and resistance to oppression. Now Johnny, I bet you're asking yourself what effect this important document had on French society and its government. <coughs> Well, shut up, you're getting annoying. Well, to start off, the declaration at the time was not perfect, and needed improvement in several areas to meet the standards that we might consider appropriate for today. While it stood for the equality of all men, nowhere did this include the rights of women. That being said, the declaration of the rights of man was key for France's transition away from the Age of Absolution into the Age of Enlightenment, and was an important step in the right direction for France's future. Now, with the Declaration of the Rights of Man, the citizens of France could move towards living in a free and equal society, and stand for liberty, equality, and fraternity. Now, Johnny, I bet you're asking yourself- Okay, I quit. I've had enough of this. Hey, where's my 20 bu- Thanks for watching, folks. We at Quan Meister Productions hope you found this educational video important in your understanding of the Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen, the people behind it, who and what influenced its doctrine of natural human rights, what human rights were included and excluded from the Declaration, and its impact on French society.